Hello, this is Roger Hutchins, and as you can see, we're in a different uh, setting today. We're in North Carolina preparing for a great Easter conference coming up in uh, Lenore, North Carolina, or actually uh, Hudson, just outside of Lenore. And uh, we want to continue uh, on the, the thoughts of the benefits of the kingdom today. And to understand the benefits of the kingdom, we've got to understand some things about what the kingdom of God really is. Uh, the kingdom of God is not things that are set way off in the future, uh, but when John the Baptist came uh, on scene and he was at the, the baptism of Jesus, he was declaring, Behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So um, whenever he uh, began to refer to Jesus, he was the one that was to forerun Jesus, and Jesus was the, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God came into the earth because of uh, Jesus Christ's arrival on planet Earth. So now the kingdom of God is just not something we're waiting for in the future. Uh, sure, the kingdom is without end, uh, but the kingdom of God is something that's now we're going to continue on those thoughts now. And what we want, specifically want you to get is what are the benefits of the kingdom. Uh, Cheryl, uh, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Uh, uh, we're getting ready to pray, and we want to pray and ask the Lord. Um, first of all, if you're not born again, we want him to touch your heart because uh, if, if you give your heart to God, you become eligible for everything that's in the kingdom of God. All the benefits, all those things, uh, you know, and uh, the scripture says, let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Well, one thing for sure, uh, if, if you're not born again, you're not going to have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. But by the new birth, the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, the new birth of, of our spirit into him, we become uh, uh, sons of God. We become uh, part of his kingdom. So uh, as we pray, Cheryl, let's pray today and, and ask God just to, to uh, bless the people, just to, uh, let them have ears to hear and uh, ask if there's anybody there that doesn't know the Lord, uh, that they, they open their heart, give the heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, let me tell you, God, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up about what God is saying about the kingdom of God and what uh, understanding more and more. I've preached about the kingdom uh, for years, but you know what? Uh, God wants to do mighty things. Let's pray. I, I feel a little hard, hard to stop here because uh, I'm excited about the kingdom of God and what the benefits that God wants to make manifest in the earth today. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Uh, God, that, that we have people that are listening to these videos, God, that are growing in the Lord. They're, they're gaining understanding. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the witness that you are giving unto them. And God, uh, your witness is, is in the form of uh, God just regenerating soul and regenerating the spirit of man. Uh, Father, you also witnessed by, by your healing touch and your healing power. And God, I thank you, Lord, that if anybody's listening today, Father, we ask you, Lord, that right now, before we even start the message, God, that they open up their heart, that they give their heart unto you. And now, uh, because they are born again, they can re reap the benefits of the kingdom of God. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. We ask you, Lord, that Cheryl and I speak as uh, your voice, one voice, God, united to speak and to bring life and, and, and prosperity, uh, God, unto your people. And God, we give you praise for it. We thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, well, sure, we, we were uh, reading, and uh, this is le actually lesson five of, on the kingdom of God that we have taught. We're, we're going to try to be extensive as far as not trying to, to uh, uh, end these messages too quick. There's a lot of other stuff going on, so sometimes there's, there's distractions. Uh, like this week, we, we preached in, in uh, Hudson uh, Sunday, and we're staying through to the conference uh, coming up. Uh, but we're getting to, to uh, in, in this atmosphere, we're getting to do uh, continue with the video. So we're going to try, oh, there'll probably only be four this week because we were tied up on Monday with uh, with visiting people and stuff. But, but anyhow, uh, I, I thank God that you uh, are here and that you're listening. Let's go back. When we ended lesson four, we were in Romans, uh, the 14th chapter. And uh, just as a matter of review and bringing us up to date where we are, we're going to start back with uh, uh, verse 17. Cheryl, you want to read those three verses 17 through 19 for us? 
For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, Amen. and things wherewith one may edify another. Amen. Now I want you to notice uh, again, and I don't uh, just just as a matter of view. Uh, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Now why is that important? Uh, because actually in that day uh, and under the old Mosaic law, uh, there were laws against uh, what they ate and drink. So as the Gentiles began to get saved and come into the kingdom of God, uh, you know, there was a problem because now they're having to think. And Jesus had said, take no thought. Now we know, we know he was talking to us about not worrying about what we're, we're going to eat or drink or what we're going to put on. Uh, as far as God's supply, God God furnishes all the things that, that, that we need. But also, there's a religious atmosphere uh, in that early church that is uh, condemning over uh, the dietary laws or condemning over what they put on or wear, you know, that, uh, you know, we'll, we're 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 not under those ordinances and all those things that were uh, were given there. We we uh, as the children of God and through Jesus Christ that law has been fulfilled. Uh, but he said uh, he said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. So we're not focusing on uh, now is what we're eating pleasing to God. Now I believe we ought to eat in moderation and believe we ought to take care of ourselves. I believe that's. Uh, you know, know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And if we understand that, we understand that we are to take care of this temple. We, we the children of God, are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So there is a, um, I think, a Holy Ghost leading to for us to endeavor to take care, care of our physical body. Uh, however, uh, if our spirit, if we take care of the physical body and our spirit's not regenerated, our spirit and our our soul is not uh, in line with God, then we, we miss the kingdom of God. But he said, uh, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink as ye suppose, but righteousness. Now we're, we're beginning to deal with things that's, that's beyond just the outward appearance now. Um, the, we have needs that's beyond just the need of our physical body. You know, most of the time, <coughs> excuse me, in the uh, in the, the church, we're so focused on uh, God meeting our physical needs that sometimes we neglect the spiritual needs. But he said, uh, uh, but, but righteousness, uh, you know, righteousness can't come by, uh, by our own efforts. It has to come by our faith in Jesus Christ. As we believe in Jesus Christ, then we, we are made the righteousness of God in Christ, not by our works, not by what we've done, but by Him. Uh, and through that righteousness, uh, there comes uh, peace. You know, I, I know a lot of people in the church that are they're tormented in their mind. They're worried all the time about, uh, you know, what's going on. And most of the time in our, in, in, uh, even in the testimonies, you know, it's, it's a woe is me. <laughs> Agony and despair. It's a, uh, you know, uh, Buck Owens uh, got that right in Hee Haw. But, uh, but see, uh, God wants to bring us into and reveal in us as his children, as sons of God, that, that he is righteousness, peace, and joy. <laughs> Amen. I like what Peter said. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, there, there, God wants us to uh, walk in the joy and peace of God. And to do that, we must realize that we are citizens of the kingdom. Stay connected. Uh, you know, even this week, I, I've uh, been in a couple of situations where uh, things were there to try to steal my joy, try to steal my peace and, and uh, bring condemnation and bring uh, you know, regret and all those things. That's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you're living in in regret, if you're living in uh, in in uh, uh, condemnation and all those things, then you can't operate fully in the kingdom of God. But thank God, uh, whenever the Jesus Christ came into the earth. 
Whenever it was announced the kingdom of heaven is at hand, now we can begin to operate, live in a different kingdom. Uh, I'm going to say this, uh, you know, uh, probably get some uh, negative uh, thoughts on it or whatever, but, uh, but uh, you know, in America now, the focus has not been on the kingdom of God. It's been on the kingdoms of, of democracy and the kingdoms of all this world and all. And I, I'm, I thank God I live in a country where we have democracy and we have liberty and, and all. But let me tell you something. All the, the uh, political stuff and all that stuff, if you're focusing on that, you're not focusing on the kingdom of God and you're not going to reap righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. There's no joy in that. Uh, but thank God, he gives us joy unspeakable and full of glory. You, you want to greet the people and comment <laughs> on anything there? Glory to God. Well, it is our privilege and pleasure to be with you again. And um, I just want to say that I was thinking about this a few minutes ago. Most people want to hop right to the benefits and not understand the groundwork to the benefits but actually righteousness peace and joy Amen. is the first set of benefits Amen. we look around not only at christians but people in the world and the horrible things that go on in the world sometimes and so many christians themselves are miserable Amen. i was a miserable christian for years <laughs> And I earnestly sought the Lord concerning that because I didn't think that was the way we were supposed to be, but I didn't know how to move into a realm of righteousness, peace, and joy. But he has brought me to that place. Glory to God. And um, it is a real, viable place where we can live. I'm saying where we can live, not move in and out of. It's not that you don't have things that try to shake you, but the more that we understand about the kingdom of God inside of us, then the more stable we become. And when things come, like Roger was saying, there were situations where we had the opportunity in him in particular to be discouraged, to be depressed, to um, other things. It would be a normal response. <laughs> but we chose to just lay all of that before God and to stay in the kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. And when we do that, first of all, our faith grows, Amen. and our love for God grows, and His love within us to love people with grows. And we, we, just, we just decided that that's how it's going to be with us. Amen. Amen. And see, that's, that's a good point, Cheryl, that, that the kingdom of God, we have to make a choice every day that we're going to walk not in in subjection to the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of darkness uh, that's referred to in the scripture, but we walk in that righteousness, peace, and joy, uh, which is manifest through the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that brings us me to another uh, thought. You know, we pray for your your salvation, but if you're uh, if you're born again but have not yet experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost is available to you. And uh, we believe, I believe whenever it comes, you know, you will have a manifestation. Uh, usually it's tongues, I think in the scripture, tongues and prophecy. But, uh, but you know, uh, at the end of the program, we're going to pray for anybody that's not uh, baptized with the Holy Spirit as they were on the day of Pentecost and uh, believe that you can uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's move on with our scripture because uh, remember in verse 17, it says the, 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 uh, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And he says, and he, and he that in these things serveth Christ. Now, in what? Not in religious rituals, not in somebody's, uh, uh, somebody's, uh, thought of how you should live you know many, every church seems to have uh different things i've been in those that thought you have, you know they didn't believe in in ties and they didn't believe in women's makeup they didn't believe in and this that or the other and and some of them needed it <laughs> uh, but but uh and all those things but you know what the outward stuff is not going to make you uh unholy uh 
an outward manifestation, you know, people that do things ugly that's on the outward uh, appearance is because of what's on the inside of them. Mm -hmm. Because the scripture says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. So now we as the children of God need to learn uh, and need to allow, uh, maybe not even learns may not, may not be the word, we just need to allow Holy Spirit to move uh, through us. But what, it, what does he say? He that in these things, what things? Righteousness, peace, and joy. The kingdom of God. Uh, he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God. Now, throw every, all your other things out, you know, uh, all your other uh, uh, stuff that everybody's told you. I, I was told every time I change churches or if I get in a relationship with a, another preacher or whatever, they give me another something else I had to do to be holy or righteous. Uh, but see, stick with the scripture. Uh, if you if you uh, remember that it's not meat and drink, which was their religious rituals. It's not in religious rituals that that. But it's in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Uh, then you walk in that. You're acceptable to Christ and approved unto men. Uh, you know, let me tell you what. Uh, I have found out, first of all, we don't seek men's approval. If, if you're seeking men's approval, it's an endless, I, believe me, I've been there. Uh, I have been there, and it is an endless, never-ending battle because men will never approve you. Uh, they will never, now not in, in your own uh, efforts, but if you walk in righteous peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, then you walk in a place where you don't care whether they approve you or not. And usually I've found out uh, if you let that go, then it'll come to you. Then, then people begin to say, I, 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 I see God in him. I see righteousness and peace and joy. I see the kingdom of God. Now all of a sudden the kingdom, uh, not only through uh, that that man Jesus uh, when he came out to John's baptism, uh, but but uh, uh, then now in us uh, people need to see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand, right here, right here. Uh, the kingdom of God is at hand, right here. The kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, I don't think we got to verse 19. Whenever uh, on our last uh, uh, lesson, lesson four, uh, but let's read it. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and all things wherewith one man edifieth another. See, something happens in the kingdom of God. Uh, I, I remember in my, in my younger years being with different ministries and I had some that would tell me you got to uh, you got to do it this way or whatever, and you, uh, you know, uh, it, it was kind of almost like uh, the mindset of doggy, uh, doggy, dog, eat dog uh, mentality that that you got to, you know, get it for yourself no matter who you got to step on. God doesn't operate like that. God brings us to a place where uh, now we can't be. Let me grant you one thing: we can't seek after the approval of man. But at the same time, we can't be like, I don't care who I hurt to get where I want to go. we got to realize that whenever we as the children of God uh, are walking righteousness, peace, and joy, there's something in us, Cheryl, that wants other people to, to come. You know, uh, uh, we want company there. Uh, you know, you may be you may be a seclusionist. You may be somebody that just kind of likes your. But but whenever God begins to move in you and the kingdom of God is operating, then righteousness, peace, and joy. Uh, you want everybody to have. It. Believe me, if Cheryl and I live in the same house together, and uh, you know we, I, I want both of us to have uh, uh, peace and joy and and walk in the righteousness of God because why? Uh, it, it, it not only uh, causes us to live in harmony, but it also empowers us to come into agreement with what the kingdom of God is. For the Jesus said, where any two of you agree is touching any one thing, it shall be done. So now the agreement of the kingdom, the righteousness of the kingdom, the peace and the joy of the kingdom begins to operate and things begin to happen. Amen. You got anything? Well, I was sitting here thinking about um, let us therefore follow 
after the things which make for peace and what some of those things might be. I think a primary thing is forgiveness. You just stay in an attitude of forgiveness so that whenever someone is offensive or um, downright ugly, <laughs> mm -hmm. you can just forgive. This keeps you in peace. It keeps you in peace and it keeps you safe because when you begin to harbor, when a person begins to harbor, um, I'm trying to find something here. When a person begins to harbor unforgiveness and resentment, that can spring up into a root of, of bitterness and that will destroy life in you. It will not only destroy your spiritual life, it will destroy your soul because you will have that continually churning in you and it will destroy your body because yeah. it will bring sickness. Amen. So uh, the things that follow that make for peace, un forgiving, staying in an attitude of forgiveness and um, thinking on the things like Paul taught us in Philippians, whatever things are good and lovely, yes. a good report, virtue, all of those things, not trying to reason out everything and figure it out because it's like Roger said, all this other thing, trying to find the approval of men, you just can't get along with everybody. Personality conflicts are just difficult but we can still stay in an attitude and follow after the things that make for peace. We don't want to go down a road that never ends. Jesus taught us that there's a straight way, a narrow path, and if we stay on that path, it'll lead us to life. Amen. And life is what we're after. Amen. You know, one, one thing I wanted uh, um, want to make clear is the kingdom of God, somebody said it's a backward kingdom. In other words, the kingdom of God doesn't operate in the earth the same way as uh, the earthly kingdoms do. Um, you know, earthly kingdoms uh, want you constantly to focus on uh, on gaining and going upward. And but Jesus said, uh, if any man wants to be great in the kingdom of God, uh, let him humble himself, become as a servant. Now that that's not talking about a slave now, or somebody that's just pushed around by everybody. But your your heart is is in a, a posture you know the reason we can't we come on these videos is that perhaps we can touch somebody and we can help you uh, gain access to things that maybe uh, you don't realize are available to you we, we're here to serve you um, you know there I, I, there are days you know my flesh would say well I'd rather not do it but uh, but there's something inside of me uh, called righteousness, peace, and joy that I want to share with you. And this is one venue, one way that we can share uh, the kingdom of God with you. Uh, you know, uh, the enemy, or and when I say the enemy, I mean uh, in John 10:10 10, 10 says, uh, "said the thief is come." Uh, to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, the thief is the devil, but it's more than the devil. This, the way, uh, the way the enemy works through different things. Actually, uh, if you go back and read in the tenth chapter, there you find that uh, that the thief is anybody that tries to come up some other way. Uh, you know, the, Jesus is the only way through the kingdom of God that that uh, was announced by John Baptist that's coming in there, Jesus was the only way to come into the kingdom of God. So now, uh, let me tell you, uh, Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, that's completely, that way of thinking is completely backward to the, to the thinking of the kingdom of this world. Because Cheryl, many times, uh, many, many times, even in our church services, uh, the, the focus is always on death and on, uh, you know, what's trials on, on and struggles. <laughs> trials and struggles here, the realms of death. But can I tell you, God wants us to move out of the realms of death. Uh, we're going to go to uh, 1 Timothy 4, uh, verse 1 through 8, but we're probably not going to go there until our next lesson because it's, it's going to be a little lengthy and a little swing to another subject. But I, I really want you to understand uh, it's a backward kingdom. You know, if you want to go up, you got to go down. Uh, uh, you know, down, humble yourself, uh, prayer, um, 
supplication unto God, you, you, you have to understand that there's a mentality in the kingdom of God of serving and bringing other people uh, to the to the to the top, <laughs> you know, it's it's not about all just me getting to the top. It's about us as the as the people of God. And what is the top? The top is our salvation. It's our relationship with God. It's walking in the kingdom of God and remembering that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's not. Uh, although God will bless us. And it's God's will that we prosper and be in hell. So I don't want to negate that thought. But at the same time, it's not how much possessions we have, uh, but it's, you know, what does the scripture say? Uh, God maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. If we gain the whole world and lose our own soul, lose our own uh, peace of mind, lose, our, lose the kingdom, uh, then we're wretched, we're blind, we're miserable. But thank God, he gives us the kingdom. He gives us righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. And He then we begin to fulfill uh, his mandate in the earth, which is to walk in the kingdom. Amen. Well, our time's up. Uh, let's pray and let's believe God. Uh, as I said, we're going to pray for you to uh, receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, during this time. I want you, if you have, don't have the baptism of the Holy, Holy Spirit, I want you right now, lift your hands. And just as we pray, I want you to open your uh, heart up to God. I want you to open your spirit up to God. Uh, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is yours. Uh, and I want you to obey God. Just allow God to, to come into you. Something may happen. You may speak in tongues. You may begin to prophesy to yourself. Something uh, may happen. But right now, I want you to realize uh, that the Holy Spirit is there for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, uh, God, for that one that's hungry for your touch today. Uh, God, through the power of your Spirit, God, uh, you will enable them to walk out the kingdom of God. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, let your wind blow on them. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon them. And God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, that the baptism... Uh, the Holy Spirit comes to them, to that one that's hungry, that, that is desiring uh, God not only to see the kingdom, but to walk in the kingdom and walk out what you have given unto them. Father, I thank you, Lord, you don't stop there, but God, you heal. Uh, God, the, the anybody that's suffering sickness, I particularly, uh, eyes today, I, I, I sent you uh, laying your hand on, on somebody's eyes and they're beginning to clear up. Uh, Father, even a, a I even see, I, I see cataract, but I see, uh, I see something that uh, is beyond that. The doctors can't even uh, uh, approach it. But God, I thank you, Lord, that you uh, heal today. And in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Lord, that we're part of your kingdom. Uh, God, and we give you glory. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we as we leave today, uh, get on uh, Facebook, on, on, on uh, uh, Twitter, uh, also on uh uh, YouTube, which is, if you get on this uh, video, you're going to be on YouTube. All, all four of the lessons will probably be there uh, at the, by the time this one gets out. So I want you to, uh, uh, I want you to watch all the, the lessons. Also, we had four lessons last week, uh, and they're there. Uh, lessons on the benefits of the kingdom of God. God bless you. We love you, and we'll see you on the next one.